Rock and Roll Geek Show 1020. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, uh, online since 2004, right. it's the one and only yeah. Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Monday. August 24th, 2020, and it's 6.01 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. So this is, this is Dog Days of Podcasting, 20, this is day 22 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, but I'm doing a regular show tonight, or by regular, I mean uh, a longer show. So uh, for the patrons, that means you're getting charged for this one, for the people who complained about their tired of 17-minute shows, uh, those people being, uh, you know who you are. <laughs> this is a normal, eh, I'm going to do a track by track of the Massive Wagon, new, new album by Massive Wagon. So the person who's pissed off that I'm doing 15 minute shows on bands you've never heard of, I'm doing a regular show on a band you've never heard of called Massive Wagons, friend. So, ah. <laughs> <sighs> Can't please everybody, but hopefully you stick around, uh, friend, because uh, I'm going to play some other music as well, and I got maybe an audio comment or two. So let's start off the show with a brand new song by, let's see, let me find my playlist here. I have to do this on <clears throat> on the Amazon Music because uh, I don't have all of these. So Let's start off with a brand new song by Coheed and... No, let's no. Let's do uh, Jesse Mallon, a brand new Jesse Mallon song fe- called Todd Youth, featuring HR from the Bad Brains. Todd Youth is a guy I know who died recently. Uh, he used to play in a band called the Chelsea Smiles. American Heartbreak went on tour with um, Hardcore... Not Hardcore Super... Uh, with... Uh, Backyard Babies and Chelsea Smiles. We did some West Coast dates with them. And we knew Todd from... I knew Todd because I grew up with his ex-girlfriend, who's the father... He was the father of her daughter. Her name is Brigitte. So I've known him for a while. And I've known her for a long, long time. Since way back in Jacksonville, Florida. And so Todd played in Chelsea Smiles. He also did a a stint in Degeneration, which is, I guess, how... um, how Jesse Mallon knows him. And he was also in, I think he was in, he might have been Murphy's Law for a short period of time too. He played with Michael Monroe for a short period of time. He played with Glenn Campbell for a short period of time. He did some session work in LA. Played, with, like I said, Degeneration. Uh, anyway, was a nice guy. And he's no longer with us. And this is Jesse Mallon's song to him called Todd Youth. Live in Babylon Society, boys and girls of the devil 
Brand new Jesse Mallon. Just came out like yesterday, I think. Todd Youth. Rest in peace, Todd Youth. All right. So before we get into the Massive Wagons track by track, Ma- Massive Wagons album is called House of Noise. They are an, in- an English band. And um, a bunch of people on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group have already put this in their like one or two on their top 10 albums of 2020. So I figured it was time for me to do a track by track. Several people uh, <clears throat> sent me this, and uh, the person who did, I will tell you, in a f- oh, I don't remember who sent it to me, but the person who, th- who did, thank you very much, friend. I have been told about this band from Alex Oliver from Bathroom Wall, Sleazy Rock and Roll, bathroomwall.co.uk, use the promo code Alan Michael Butler, get free shipping anywhere in the world. And lots of other people. Before we get into that, though, let me thank some people who donated to the show. Because without your donations, as you know, et cetera, et cetera. But let's find some music to play. So I'm going to play in the background a band called The Lemon Twigs. I have been told about this band by somebody in San Francisco who's been bugging the shit out of me. You got to listen to The Lemon Twigs. You got to listen to The Lemon Twigs. They are the next big thing. They are the greatest band ever. It's the Lemon Twigs of these two kids from New York who dress all glam and or dress like uh, like Mark Bolin and uh, they, have, they have a cool look. I haven't given them a chance. So in the background, while I thank the donors, we're going to play Lemon Twigs brand new album, Songs for the General Public in our background. Now, I've never heard this. So if this sucks... You can feel free to email me, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Anyway, if it sucks or not, just let me know what you think of it. And I'll let you know what I think of it right now. So the first song, Hell on Wheels by Lemon Twigs. Okay, let's look. Hell on Wheels. Uh-oh, what happened? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <sighs> we are having a major meltdown, friends. All right, Hell on Wheels, Lemon Twigs. Let's, here we go. <laughs> I think a Todd Rundgren did something with them on their last record. So many faces, so many different places to meet. I rip down the strip, all looking for some cash. All right, friends, there are several ways you can donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. One, you can go to patreon.com slash rnrgeek, like the following people did. doesn't suck. It's okay so far. Thank you, Tim Shaw, for donating $15 every episode on Patreon. Thank you, Kirk Crawford, $12.77. 
Thank you, Joseph Coyne, ten dollars. Dan Gerowan, ten dollars. Thank you, new donor Cole Thornton, six dollars and sixty-seven cents. He had to one-up Joe Pollack, who donated six dollars and sixty-six cents. Thank you, Dave Slusher, donated five dollars and fifty-five cents. Brand new donor, Steve Trice, $5. Thank you, Steve T. I really appreciate it, friend. It's nice to have you here. By the way, Jen Ursus on his show review said all these people are like family. They really are. I feel like I've known all these guys forever. Steve T called a long time ago at Rock and Roll Geek Show. Dave Slusher, of course. Kurt Crawford, my bodyguard. All these people are family. Thank you, Justin Lethkowitz, new donor, $5. Thank you, Mark Meze, new donor, $5. New donor, Eric Klein, $5. I love this, friends. I love the new donors. Thank you, Fred and Jenny Bunky. Fred and Jenny Bunky, thank you for the $5, new donors. New donor, Steve Scolier. I know I'm mispronouncing your name, Steve Scholar. I I apologize. Five dollars. All right, that song's okay. Let's let's go down farther. Live in favor of tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, This not this one's not doing it. Thank you. Rodney Cross, $5. Thank you to Grant Fachois, $5. Thank you to Jamie Jefford, $5. Thank you, Marsha York, $5. Brad Schick, $5. I'll give these kids one thing. They're original sounding. How about the next one? No one holds you closer than the ones you haven't met. This one's okay. Little David, little old David Bowie sounding it slightly. Thank you to, I don't know where I am here. Thank you, Jamie Jefford, $5. Thank you to Marsha York, $5. Thank you to Brad Schick, $5. Thank you to Michael Brown, $5. One of my oldest friends in the face of the earth, Mike Brown. Thank you to Betty Wood, $5. Michael Street, friend of mine and family, $5. Thank you to Brian Springer, $5. Thank you to my good friend Chiaki Hinohara, who I had lunch with on Saturday. Great time. $5. What's missing on these songs is a chorus. I guess it's a chorus, but it's not really that much of a hook. These, fan, these kids are compared to the darkness, I guess because they dress glammy and stuff, but the darkness has, has catchy tunes. This is not extremely uncatchy, but where's the hook, man? Maybe it'll grow on me. Thank you to Robert Harvey, $5. Thank you to Ken Kennedy, $5. Thank you to Derek Coward from Comic Book Noise, $3. Thank you to Chad Burns, $2.50. Thank you to Paul Rube, $2.25. Thank you to Paul Smith for the $2. Thank you to Adrian Boshon, Bosch Rock on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do approve people. You just got to answer two questions so that I know you are not somebody trying to hijack the U.S. Postal Service. Thank you to John Boveri, $2. Patrick Shanahan, $2. Bruce McMillan, $2. Mike Dixon, $2. Eric Stowell, $2. Matthew Hunt, $2. Paul Underwood, maker of Underwood Fine Barbecue Sauce, $2. Rock and Roll Plebe, new donor, $1.42. Amelia Bowen, $1. Arnie Stash, $1. Three Legs, Four Wheels. Bonstone, John Richardson, and Corey Kohler, all $1. Thank you to all the Patreon donors. Here's a sip of this fine drink of Sapporo tonight because I forgot to buy beer. Ah, 
What else we got here? How about Fight? Fight from Lemon Twigs. Come on, Fight. Okay. All right. You can also donate on PayPal. All, by the way, all these, just go to rockandrollgeek.com and click the donor button. Just like I need a hole in my head. This doesn't suck. I've heard a lot worse. Thank you to Joe Pollack, my bodyguard. Donated $200. Thank you, Joe Pollack. I really appreciate it, friend. Thank you to Richard Fusey, $100 who would probably like to rescind that $100 after hearing this episode. Thank you to Douglas Free, $100. Thank you to John Morgan, $100. Thank you to Rodney Cross, $100. Everybody who donated $100, thank you so much. And Joe Pollack for the $200. Kirk Crawford, $50. Thank you, Michael Street, donated again, $50. Thank you, Kirk Crawford, again, donated another $50. I love this. Thank you, Richard Strom, $20. Richard Fuse, $20. Thanks to Douglas Free, $20. Thanks to James Venners, $10. Jeff and Sherry, Thelalalalaki, $10. That one's not really doing it for me. Try this. Thank you to School of Podcasting, $10. Daniel Segan, $10. Dick. Thank you, Dick. Schuit. For $10. You know what this reminds me of? Hedwig and the Angry Inch without the songs. What else we got? Moon. We have a moon here. I think these kids were told they were geniuses. And they probably have good-looking girls hitting on them all the time because they're glam-looking kids and they're good-looking kids. Yeah, it sounds a lot like Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Which is not a bad thing. I just wish there were more structured rock and roll songs. Little the little uh, not theatrical, a little Broadway. Thank you to Chris. Oh, did I thank Dick? Schuit. For the ten dollars, yes, I did. Thank you to Chris Atherton, ten dollars. Thank you to Jason Shepard, ten dollars. Thank you to friend of mine and friend of the show, Ralph Miller, ten dollars. Thank you to friend of the show and friend of mine, Todd Cunningham. For ten dollars, thanks to Bre- Greg, Greg Brofer, ten dollars. Thank you, Greg. I really appreciate it, friend. Thank you, BJ Lisco, ten dollars. Thank you to Robert Giglio, five dollars. Thank you to Andrew Howe, five dollars. Thanks to Dale Roller, five dollars. Thanks to Jero Carroll, five dollars. Thanks to Christopher Del Grande, five dollars. Thanks to Robert Scott, five dollars. See if I can end this about the same time that this song ends. Thank you to Peter Spark, five dollars. Blake Johnson, five dollars. Blake John Stun, five dollars. Thanks to John Offenloch, five dollars. Thanks to Brett Garski, $5. Thanks to Richard Fusey, $5. Thanks to Benjamin Muller, $5. Eric Lentz, $5. Thank you to Michael Williams, $5. John Tennis, $5. Stephen Bailey, $3.33. Thank you to Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, for the $2. Richard Fusey, $2. Jason Wendleton, $2. Bradford Page, $2. Robert Giglio, $2. Lassie Sattvenhagen, $2. And finally, Thank you to William Moffitt for the $2. Thank you to everybody who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is a value for value. So whatever value you get out of this piece of shit show, please donate it to me. I take a sip of this fine, take this uh, Sapporo to everybody. Ah. Kill it! 
Okay. Oh, let's let it roll. There you go. The Lemon Twigs. That song wasn't bad. I saw a video of them playing on Seth Meyers, and the kid was playing a um, BC Rich Mockingbird guitar, which had good tasting in a, in a uh, Vox amp, while the other kid was playing piano. It wasn't bad. All right. Ready to do the track by track of the Massive Wagons album? Uh, the, the, the album is called House of Noise. Produced by the guy who did Slipknot. And the guy, the, I forget the guy's name. Massive Wagons. Let me see. Massive Wagons. Massive Wagons House of Noise Review. Okay. Uh, the guy, his name, what is his name? Um, is it th- this review? Everybody's raving on this album, by the way, House of Noise. I mean, everybody is raving on it. No, that's not it. The guy who produced it, uh, does, oh, his name is Colin Richardson, did Slipknot, he's done all of these, like, death metal bands, so for him to be doing a a hard, just a regular hard rock band, like Massive Wagons, branching out a little bit, all right, so there are, let me pull up Massive Wagons here, Ornest, Massive Wagons, okay, stop that, Massive wagons, massive. Now you would think I would be prepared and just have it real already up, but I didn't. All right, the album's called House of Noise. There's 12 songs in this album. The Rock and Roll Geek, geek Scoring System, Rock and Roll Geek, Rock and Roll Geek, Geek, the Rock and Roll Geek Scoring System. 12 songs. If I like the song, I give it a half. No, if I like the song, I give it a plus one. <laughs> Losing my mind, friends. If I if it's uh, okay, I give it a half. If it uh, sucks, I give it a zero. So there's 12 songs. If I like every song, I give it a 12 out of 12. You get the pick. And if I don't like any, it's a zero out of 12. If I, only, if I give them all a half, it'd be six out of 12. You get it. It's not very scientific, but it usually comes out pretty, pretty accurate. All right. So the first, oh, so Colin Richardson produced it. Let's see, see other, the other bands he's produced. Let's see. Colin Richardson, British Record. Why did Colin Kaepernick come up? Oh, boy. All right, Richard. Okay, let's see. He has produced... Yada-da-da. Three Inches of Blood, Anathema, Anonymous, As I Lay Dying, Behemoth, Bolt Thrower, Bullet from My Valentine, Cannibal Corpse, Carcass, The Chameleons, The Change, Chimera, Cradle of Filth, Crash... Devil Driver, God forbid, GBH, Murder Dolls, member, just a ton. Machine Head, ev- just about everybody he's produced. Sepultura, uh, uh, Slipknot, all, most of everybody has been super death metal. So, uh, uh, Gorgut, God forbid, I don't know any of these bands, but they're all death. They're all super metal bands. All right. So the first song is called "In It Together." All right, I think I played this one on the Rock and Roll Geek Show before. That's a little like the darkness. I think this album debuted in the, on the UK charts in like the top five or something like that. It was in the top ten at least. Then 
There's a video of them recording this. They recorded it. I think they recorded it where Judas Priest rehearses. Because there's a Judas Priest banner behind the drum kits. I like this. This is a definite plus one. It's very good. Great, catchy, hard rock song. Let's go! All right, that's a plus one, big plus one. All right, next song, Banging in Your Stereo, which they this was already released too, and I believe I played this on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Good anthemic guitar lick. A 73 I like that it's okay this guy's a good singer It's okay. I'm, I'm I'm leaning towards a strong half. I like the chorus, but right, it's got a breakdown, which is good. Not crazy about getting down on the radio. I'm gonna give it a strong half. All right, next song is House of Noise. House of Noise. That's good. I'm in. I'm in. I'm really in now. Yeah, that's good. Open your brain to match your heart and his beat. Cause when your mind unwinds, and if you try and remind the noises once that live there, they are the days of your youth, and they were speaking to you. But now it's silence, they've gone elsewhere. I'm just smashing my face until another tomorrow. That's good.
That's good. That's a big, big plus one for me. That's got everything I like in a rock and roll song. Simple, catchy, follow the bouncing ball lyrics. Good beat, catchy chorus, catchy verse. It's, it's great. Solo's great. Simple lines intertwining. Building up, this is good. I'm just smashing my face into another tomorrow. Closing today, the war, but yesterday's audio. Killing some time till I push down on a toe to go. I'm only killing some time inside my house of noise. Killed by the crime, killed by the lows and the highs. Killing some time till I go deaf in my house of noise. 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 All right, that's a big, big plus one for me. I like that one. Next song, Freak City. Freaking out, I'm freaking out. That's good too. Guitar player's good too. I like this guy. Yeah, this is good too. Big chorus. I would read you some of the reviews online, but every single review I've gone to is gushing over this album. Good melodic guitar solo. Little reminds me a little of the darkness. Ah, good another breakdown. I could do without a modulation. I'm not a fan of modulation. Alright, 
I like that. I'll give it a plus one. They should not have done a a modulation, but I'm probably in the minority of that. I'm just not a fan of modulations. Next song is a six minute and two second song called Hero. ACDC. Change of pace on this one. Change of pace from the boys. I like this. It's old ACDC. in two seconds. I like it. See where see where it goes. Let's get it past this. All right, we're three minutes into it now. Is it gonna jam? Turn into a jam session? It is. I like this. This is good. was a good guitar solo, friends. Alright, that's a big plus one for me. Alright, next song. That's good. Professional Creep. Metal guitar player. We got a headache that won't go away. No time for the doctor. We self medicate. We got pills for all pains. We got pills for our sleep. We got blue pills for things that we're struggling to keep.
God, this song. We're on a week half on this one so far. Alright, this chorus is okay. See if it goes anywhere. I'll use this solo here. Yeah, that guitar player is a badass. Alright, since here in the guitar solo in the chorus, I'm raising it up to a strong half. Alright, big half, strong half. Next song, Pressure. Oh, that sounds good. Anthemic guitar lick. That's good. It's right up my alley. I could do without the warp tour drum lick or whatever you call that drum beat. Like this, this is that's a little wild hearts here, a little bit. That's a little descendants. I'm not crazy about the verses, but everything else I like. I like this part. So the pre-chorus is good. I like the chorus. This is good. I'm sorry if you think we're wasting your time. I'm sorry. A total left turn.
right, I'm giving this one a... <sighs> give it a soft one. Verging on a half, but I'll, I'll give it a soft one. All right, next song is The Curry Song. Hello, is that the Taj Mahal? Chicken biryani, lump of Calling to order some curry. Appetizer, cook it hot, 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 coconut, not, not, not. Two team and arms, cheesy chips, some of those nice spicy dips, vindaloo, cider rice, make it prawn, extra spice, life at home or life away, curry mile or East Bombay, face to face. You gotta be a Brit to get this. Nine cold cobras, a lassie, mango, steel ice farm, I'm not a fan though, munching barges, pecora nora, madrasa of old tip, a course of corner. Alright, it's an ode to his favorite restaurant. Reminds me a little bit of Slade. I like this. It's, it's not anything fancy, but uh, it's catchy and I like it. I'm going to give this one a plus one. I'll give it a, a little more accord. It's a proper, proper diamond in. It's my favorite place in the world. If you fancy it sometime, give me a ring. It's my favorite place to go. It's a proper, proper diamond in. All right, I like that one. Plus one. Next song, Glorious. Rick, the pen. Uh-oh. Yeah, again, this is up my alley.
All right, I'm giving Glorious. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give that one a plus one. That's a soft plus one. Next song, sad, sad song. Metal. Bark at the moon. Bark at the moon. No denying these hooks. <laughs> hey, I'm okay, I'm all right. I got plenty of sleep last night. It's a brand new day. What the hell is this crawling up my back, smashed into my brain again? This has never happened before. It went on and on and on and on. I hope I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong. It back me down and yeah, I like this. This is catchy. I'm plus one. Damn, there's a lot of plus ones on this. Alright, let's hear the solo. Oh, melodic solo. Massive hooks. This song is good. Alright, all right, this is a big plus one for me. It's right up this I like I'm saying it over and over, it's right up my fucking alley. You gotta love, how can you not love hard rock guitars, great drums, and super catchy choruses. Like this ending. Yeah, that's a big plus one for me. Next song, Halla Screw Ya, which is about a guy who walked out of a show after like the first or second song. I know I can relate to this because everybody in the crowd can be rocking out and loving the band. But when I see one guy walk out the door, I say, I think to myself, huh, he didn't like us? I wonder what, why he didn't like us. How to Screw Ya is the name of the song. Slowing down the tempo a bit.
That's good. This one goes out to the man who left the show. That's good. He doesn't know. Wow, that's fucking great. <laughs> All right, I'm opening up my third beer now. This is a... I'm on the bottom of the barrel of these beers now. I'm at Firestone Lager now. Hello, hello. Just after you gone. It was beers on the house as long as we played the... Sapporo's good, but you got to be eating food with the Sapporo. We're back to the massive wagon. My beer talk. That is fucking great, man. I'm so, this is my favorite song on the album. This will probably be a crowd, like one of the great live tunes. I've never seen them live. I, they, I can't say I know anything about this band. I've never seen them live, but uh, I would imagine this would be a good live. One. Big plus one for me. That was good. Man. I mean, if you're a guy who writes tunes, I'd be jealous of this band. Those are fucking catchy tunes, man. All right, last song. An eight-minute epic. Matter of time. You like to have an album closer with something introspective and possibly ballady. The secret weapon in this band is that guitar player. Sit me in silence, please sit me in sunshine. If you showed me a guidance, I was nowhere before. I was nowhere until I'm sick to my back teeth. So please sit me still. Crushed on the knee. The letter myself. The world's best remembered. If I had to give any negativity about this album. The singer's voice can get a little on your nerves at times. Still crushed on 
But the guy's got a super strong, powerful voice. And he writes great melodies. I gotta let this one go a little longer before I know if it's a half or a plus one. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Girl, I know you shine, shine, shine. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Let's get it a little farther. I'm gonna go eight minutes here. Uh, get to the back it up here. Nice bluesy guitar solo. I need to keep my rock credibility, so I'm going to give this one a half, although it's a strong half. Let's tally it up, shall we? One and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. Ten and a half out of twelve. I would say that is a pretty accurate score. Once again, the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system outdoes. Let's see what all these out all these shows. Outdoes the four out of five from Louder ClassicRock.com. Much more scientific than Metal Planet Music's. Uh, what are they giving? They give. Uh, they don't give it a score. Much more accurate than maximum volume music. Much more accurate than at the barrier.com. Do you agree with me, friends? It's a ten and a half out of twelve. <laughs> out of twelve. <laughs> Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line, Butler. You nailed it, brother. <laughs> Put that in the subject line. You disagree with me and think this album's a piece of shit? Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line, Butler. Hang it up. You lost it. This album blows. The new Miles Kennedy blows it away. Down the subject line. I will put a link to where you can buy Massive Wagon. House of Noise on rockandrollgeek.com. It's just a matter of time. Ah, all right, friends. I hope you like this review of House of Noise by Massive Wagons. Available now. Ah, all right, I got a couple audio comments. Here's, who's this? Let me back it up here. Hello, caller. Caller. 
Oh, call. Oh. <sighs> Pardon me, I'm burping up this fine. Uh, what am I drinking here? Firestone water. I'm getting a buzz. Uh, hello, caller. Hey, Butler, what's going on? It's Jonathan Travers. Jonathan Travers, it is so good to have you back as a regular caller, friend. Just wanted to say a quick word. Please please don't play this on the show because I'm going to mention something here. But I just... uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> what do I do? Do I stop it now? See, that's the problem. I don't listen to these audio comments before. All right, Jonathan Travers, don't get mad at me, friend. I can't stop it now. Reading, uh, I was just listening to you know the, your show where you mentioned Frank Benali. Man, that really bums me the fuck right out. I mean, I'm not the biggest Quiet Riot fan, but uh, read about. How- Why don't you want me to play it on the show? You don't want people to hear how you're emotional, dude. Did you hear me cry like a fucking baby when I was talking to Pete Way's wife? <laughs> There's nobody can be more embarrassed than that. The biggest Quiet Riot fan. But uh, read about how he had the multiple strokes and everything. Just really, God damn, my dad just passed away from uh, cancer. Oh, man, I'm sorry. A couple of years ago. And fuck, he had the, he'd had the same shit, man. He oh, had really? like, a couple of strokes right before the end there. It was just, fuck. Do you think that's God's cruel joke? I mean, why would a person got, go in such suffering? Pete Way did it. Frankie Benali did it. Jonathan Travers de- Damn. That fucking sucks, man. But just to read that about Frank, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not the biggest Quiet Riot fan. But motherfucker, I was 12 when that record came out. And uh God, I played the fucking daylights out of that thing. And I'll never forget go never forget uh, going to a fair in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh threw enough darts and hit the balloons just right. And uh, one one of those, remember those square little Coke mirrors? The mirrors that everybody did cocaine off of in the 70s, of course. I had several of them, friend. See, <laughs> with the album. They would uh, they would sc- silk screen or screen print an album cover onto a 12 by 12 mirror. Those things were great. I wonder if you can still buy those. This is probably collectible now. I was on it. I won the Quiet Riot Mental Health one, and I fucking cherished that thing. I had that thing forever. <laughs> What'd you do with it? Uh, until I broke it moving, uh, moving a bunch of shit one time. Uh-huh. Really, it was probably your girlfriend who broke it too, right? I mean, uh, that one too, but yeah, man, that fucking, God, that fucking sucks, man. Yeah, it does. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I just, just reminded me of my father. But uh, I also wanted to say too, I was really sorry to hear about your dogs, you know. That uh, <laughs> also brought me back, you know, I, I sent you some. Jonathan Travers getting a little uh, getting a little uh, sensitive on us here. I like it. I like the new sensitive Jonathan Travers. Pictures of my Jack Russell Terry yeah. that I had. I had that fucker for 13 years. Yep. Got him in 07. You grow attached to your dogs, man. Joel from Feather Witch and fills him with the butlers and is in the ACDC tribute band, too. His beagle, he had to put his pe- beagle down, 16 years old. And the week before he had to put him down, or two weeks before he had to put him down, he went up to take a piss in the middle of the night, and he tripped over the dog and broke his collarbone. <laughs> the things we do for our dogs, man. Yeah, it sucks losing a dog. And uh, I run- <laughs> how's this for fucking irony? I had to put I had to put him down last December, December fucking twenty third. Day before Which, my birthday. ironically, was his fucking birthday. Day before mine. His fucking, uh, got his kidneys in the last few months. Just, t- just out of the blue, went to, cr- went to shit. Yep. You know, when dogs go, they go fast. I think the same thing happens with humans. He had the foot, he had the leg removed, the, the right front leg removed. Oh, man. He had cancer in his paw that spread to his neck. Oh, man. I'm sorry about the oh, fuck. And uh, he's only supposed to live the, you know, actually got the diet, the prognosis from the surgeon. He was only supposed to live 18 months approximately after that surgery. He made it four years, just over four years. But, uh, yeah, I had to put him down December 23rd. Man, you want to see it? Uh, you want to see a grown man cry, friends? You can have the toughest dude in the world. But you, you take that, you go with that grown man who's a tough guy. To put his dog to sleep, 
it does not matter how tough that man is, he will cry like a baby when his dog dies. Think of that fucking dog every day, man. And, and it, Back it up here. He was only supposed to live 18 months approximately after that surgery. He made it four years, just over four years. But uh, yeah, I had to put him down December 23rd, man. I'll tell you what. I think of that fucking dog every day, man. And, and it's just, God, I don't know how you do it, man. Because I've only had, I've had two dogs my whole life. One when I was a little kid. But Dude, I've had to put down, we've put down like seven or eight at this point. Or six or seven, something like that. Between six and eight dogs we've had to put down. It don't get any easier, man. God damn, I just miss that fucking dog every day. It just yep. pisses me the fuck off. My up. favorite dog of all time, Ali. I'll never forget having to put him down, man. He was still going, but he was starting to be in pain, and my wife decided it was his. he was not enjoying his life. I took him for a walk to the beach, which is two blocks from my... I bought a steak and took him for a, a walk down to the beach before I fed him that steak, and he went to the beach, and he was digging a hole like a happy little boy. And when I was watching him dig that hole, like he was playing and enjoying it, his life, and I'm thinking, man, I got to put him down in fucking an hour or two. I fucking was bawling my fucking eyes out on the beach. <laughs> oh, man. I shouldn't have played this call. I sit in that pool and I miss him so much. God, I used to love sitting on a raft and just oh, falling asleep man. in the sun. I miss that son of a bitch like it's nothing. Oh, yep. my God, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you, you, miss, see, you miss your dog more than you miss your the, the most true love girlfriend of your life. I can't even talk. But uh, anyway, thanks for saying something about Frankie Benelli, man. That was badass. Love you, brother. Take it easy. I Stay love, frosty. Love you too, friend. I hope you forgive me for playing your audio comment, just, uh, Jonathan Travers. Yeah, now you got me thinking about Pete Way. You got me thinking about Walter Lohr. About Jonathan Travers' dad dying, Pete ben, uh, Frankie Benali, my dogs, Joel's dog, Jonathan Travers' dog. <sighs> Way to bring the show down, <laughs> Jonathan Travers. <laughs> All right, thank you, friend. All right, one more audio comment. Oh, God, I'm bummed out. Why, hello there, Michael Butler. It's uh, Jesse, the Canadian rock geek here in Jesse Denos, the long time, first time Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And I'd sent in a, a show review of the Iron Maiden show I oh. saw uh, when I was living in Vancouver. OK, I haven't heard that was a long time ago then. And I figured I'd go even further back in time for myself. All right. So we're doing a show review from the past, which, by the way, I've got like five in the past day. So thank you, everybody who's sending them warms my heart to get these things friends i got a lonely kayaker coming out tomorrow i did a i went fishing on sunday uh so a lonely kayaker then some uh, then some show reviews from the past but jesse denos from canada here's yours and uh, tell you about the show i saw at the town pump of uh, the british band suede, suede. on september i don't know suede I don't know anything about them. Are they like Oasis? Third, 1993. 93, okay. I had to go and look up uh, all of this stuff on the old reliable uh, setlist.fm. Yes. And uh, it did... Uh, I'm not going to know any of these tunes, Jesse. I'm, I apologize, friend. Back some memories, I got to say. So uh, the town pump, and we'll go with the, with the venue first. The, uh, the town pump was not originally designed as a performance venue, and it is located in Gastown, or was located in Gastown, mm -hmm. which is an area in Vancouver that's right by the port. And uh, it's a long, skinny, narrow venue where there was a bar at the back. And you know, American Heartbreak was supposed to play Vancouver. We got stopped at the border on the way to the fucking gig, and they would not let us into their country <laughs> for no reason. They stopped us. They searched our van. They kept us there for like six hours while they questioned everybody separately. And for some reason, they decided they were not going to let us into their country. I believe there was a bar up at the side at the front. And the stage was kind of in the middle, pressed up uh, against one of the side walls. So um, when there was a band there and things were really busy, uh, 
it was just a bit of a nightmare to try and go get drinks because you had everybody gathered around the stage watching right, the performance the and then you would have to kind of squeeze by to get up one side or squeeze by to get down the other side and uh which was which was fine when there was a, a band playing there that wasn't drawing a lot of people uh i can't remember i remember that the this particular show was packed um the capacity of that place might have been 350 people something like that's probably a bit less than that but uh you know it would be fine if there were like 100 people in the place but um this show it was packed and uh, Suede was uh, a huge British band. I'm sure uh, it's also a band that's not particularly popular with the listeners yeah. of the Rock and Roll Geek show. But uh, they did have a number one album in Britain at the time, I believe. Huh, and they, they were on uh, one of those short promotional... Now, I'm thinking of the Verve. The Champagne Supernova, whatever that is. A North American tours that they would send bands on. Um, that said, uh, I don't think anybody really knew who the hell they were in North America. So they got sent to this relatively small venue in uh, Vancouver and um, played probably for the smallest audience that they had played for in eons. Uh, so they uh, began the show and um, I had taken uh, my stepbrother and my girlfriend at the time. And she might have been the only woman in the place. Uh, I seem to remember uh, looking around and um, there were like just all dudes and all kind of, uh, you know, Brit pop loving dudes. Huh. Brit pop loving dudes. Huh. I guess Oasis fans, right? And Suede came out and you had to walk... Uh, I think through the crowd to get on stage or you had to walk along the side wall to get up on the stage and start playing. And so when they came uh, and uh, started performing, the place just went bananas. Huh. And I remember kind of being up near the front with the two other people that I brought and kind of looking around and it was just a sea of guys with the, um, you know, prototypical floppy British hair yeah, and that yeah. look that was uh, really yeah, popular at yeah, the time. Oasis look. And uh, they were, you know, seeing a band that was massive in Britain and Europe at the time, but probably unknown in North America. So uh, they, they went... They Britpop geeks. I can relate. They started playing, and I remember that the lead singer, he had his belt on, but his belt was kind of all twisted and I just thought that that was really kind of odd that he was playing with a with a twisted belt. But, you know, that said... I've done that. I've put a belt on and it's been twisted before. Um, I remember the show being good and they played their big hits. Um, Animal Nitrate was the third song in the set. Uh, Metal Mickey, which is my favorite song they do, was the fourth song in the set. And uh, another song of theirs that I quite like, So Young, don't was uh, Song 11. They played 13 songs in all, according to setlist.fm. And uh, I can't remember if there was an opening band, but uh, I only remember remember seeing Suede and that they uh, put on a pretty good show and they played for a, a rabid crowd uh, of however many people were, a capacity crowd, uh, but the only fans of that band in the city of Vancouver. And they all happened to be in that venue at the time. So uh, there's a deep dive for me back uh, almost 30 years ago to uh, September the 23rd, 1993, when I saw Suede at the Town Pump. Uh, Hope this helps out with your content for the dog days. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate it, friend. Don't know Suede, but thank you for the show review. It was good. All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. I'm going to close out with one more song. Oh, by the way, you too can leave me a show review from the past. Do like Jesse did. Go to setlist.fm. Look up, a, think about a show you went to. Look it up on setlist.fm and try to relive it to the best of your ability, friends. And send it to me to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. You can just record it on your phone. You know how to do it. And email it to me, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com, like Jesse Denos, Genos, Jesse Denos did. Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate it, friend. All right, I'm going to play one more song before we get out of here. Uh, several people told me about this song, and it's it's kind of uh, 
it's kind of gaining uh, virality. What do you virality? No, this is a sequel to Rick Springfield's song "Jesse's Girl," but it's not by Rick Springfield. It's by a band called Coheed and Cambria. But Rick Springfield sings the bridge of this song, and. The best part of the song is the bridge featuring Rick Springfield singer, but it's a super catchy tune. I don't know much about Coheed and Cambria. I think I played it a long, long, long time ago on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. I, I think Rush fans like Coheed and Cambria, but I don't know anything about the band. They had a singer with uh, big Afro-type hair, white dude. But this song is catchy as hell. So it's Rick Springfield. Uh, so in Rick Springfield, and the video is good too. Rick Springfield is the bartender, and yeah, look for the video. It's good, and the song is super catchy. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends. I'll talk to you tomorrow with day twenty three of the Dog Days of Podcasting. It'll be a lonely kayaker episode, probably, if I can put it together. I got stranded out at sea in the fog. I'll probably call it Lonely Kayaker in Distress because I thought about calling the... Uh, it was a combination of fog and smoke, I think, because the, the fires that are going on around here. I got lost out in the middle of the ocean by myself. So that you got that to look forward to tomorrow, friend, if you're, if you're into these Dog Days episodes. Find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. By the way, thank you so much for listening, friends. I really appreciate it. There's a million podcasts out there. And if you chose this one to listen to, that makes you... Someone who I admire greatly. And I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, friends. All right, you can find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. You can find me on the Twitter, r and or Yeah, find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. Find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. <sighs> and please keep the donations coming. This is a value for value. So if you get any value at all out of these episodes... Contribute what you can, friends. There's also an Amazon link at rockandrollgeek.com as well. Anything you buy on Amazon, I'll get a little kickback. So that's another way to support the show. You can also call in other radio shows and get some Rock and Roll Geek um, sayings in there, just some kind of references. We'll be inside joke, you know, like a Baba Booey type thing, like super great, couldn't be better, take a sip of this fine Tecate. Uh, you know, everything, that, all the stupid shit that I say. <sighs> Even say Chris Del Grande. Hi, this. Hi, I, my name is Christopher Del Grande. Anything like that, just so we know you're a rock and roll geek friend listening. And you are like, um, like Jen Ursa said. Everybody on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group is is now become like a family, and you're all welcome at my house anytime, friends. I'll talk to you soon. Here's Coheed and Cambria, Jesse's Girl Two. <laughs>
It just seems strange he put up no fight When she broke his heart that fateful night Jesse played sincere, he sure seemed cool What I hadn't known was I was his fool We're married now, house job, three kids Dreaming what life could have been Stranded on the ifs and maybes Had I left that monster in the end It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.